welcome, welcome to episode 162. I don't know. Either way. Oh, I'm right. Amazing. Alex I've, is nodding. That's good. That's good. Um, it's been a while since we've done spirit science. It's probably been like three or four months. Damn, for real? Yeah. What's the last one we did? It was... Uh, what, did we do any after energy, frequency, and vibration? No, I think, I think we that left was it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That, that I mean, was it the is last a one. relatively newer uh, segment. Yes. But um, yeah, ever, ever since we like started the move into the house and all that, we just haven't had time to do one of those. So I was like, dang, man, it's time to get back in the saddle, you know? Get back in the science. So yeah, there we go. There we go. Get back on that. <laughs> get back on that frequency, dude. <laughs> so we were talking this week, like, okay, we're going to do a spirit science. What should we talk about and nick was like well actually <laughs> i've been thinking we should talk about the celestial bodies they're pretty cool what are they and you know? <laughs> what are these big rocks floating out there yeah honestly what are they they're pretty crazy dude i'm just saying and i never <laughs> thought about that i you know that's that's a really cool idea and um yeah so like just thinking about the celestial bodies it's like they're so fascinating i mean like i feel like as long as humans have been around, they're like this spectacle that's constantly hanging over our heads. Right. Like when I think about celestial bodies, I'm like, obviously the earliest civilizations like worshiped the the celestial bodies, like worshiped the sun and the moon. And I mean, if I barely knew how to speak any language and I saw those things, it's like always floating above like, um, even up for, for thousands upon thousands and thousands of years, like the celestial bodies have been worshipped and like, I get it. They're, they're weird. It's really crazy to put into context, like how disconnected we are today from the celestial bodies. When you know back then, like what they were doing was observing time and all of this spiritual yeah. and philosophical significance by looking at them in the night sky. And we don't even really care. I think a lot about, um, like how much time we spend watching TV in the evenings in modern day. And yeah. I think I always have this thought about like ancient peoples just sky watching all night, like TV, like yeah. watching it move across the sky, understanding how it changes by day and by season. And it's like, like you said, we're so disconnected and it's like, what well, dude, uh, just the hours spent watching TV versus outside. It's crazy. Yeah. Like how many times have you like looked at the moon and had that everybody, this happens to everybody. I feel like you look at the moon and then it hits you. Like you look at the moon every day all the time and you're like, there's the moon. It's the I'm going to say it hits me probably pizza pie five to seven times a week. It's crazy. Like it, when it does hit you, then you think like I'm small. I'm, t I'm freaking uh, smaller than an atom on a freaking grain of sand. But also it's just weird that it's just like always there. We're locked in this cosmic dance of gravity that like there, we have this sun that's always there, always going to be there. Well, at least for hundreds of billions of years. And then this moon that's just like freaking floating outside of us. Like it's like so a spaceship or something <laughs> <laughs> or like a big old ball of rock, you know, you yep, thought I was going to say cheese. <laughs> I did. I did. I did. Yeah. Why does it got a face on it? I know that's pretty spooky too. Do you remember that toy when you were little that had the glass panel on it and the little beads and you like put your face in it? That's why. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so some big cosmic entity is like pressing its face through the moon. Yeah. Dude, Alex was like, you know, back in the day, you know, we watch so much TV today and they watch the sky as much as maybe we watch TV today. Could you imagine? It's like June 20th and you're like sitting outside with all your buddies in your tribe and then you know this constellation that only appears at this part uh portion of the year pops up in the sky and you're like oh shit bro that's my favorite show yeah, yeah. <laughs> yo <laughs> they're like well, yo whoa, whoa. <laughs> they're like watching the drama of the it's like reality tv except with the celestial bodies <laughs> yeah yeah they got I'm, like tattoos and a little dipper <laughs> <laughs> they're carving it into themselves yeah yeah and then imagine when an Dude, ecl eclipse happens you're probably yeah. not far off yeah. Oh shit, bro. That's that's Orion. That's my favorite character. Like, <laughs> yeah. like, yeah. I guarantee you, there's drawings of constellations in caves and absolutely. Yeah. Well, there have to be. No, we've seen them. We've seen them in like Babylon, like Mesopotamia, right. like Stargate. <laughs> right. I mean, do you draw things that you don't like? Um, 
I'm, dis- I'm being dead serious. It was serious. just really funny the way you said I'm that. I'm being dead serious. Do you draw things you don't like? Because I, I don't draw a lot, but I when I draw, draw I draw things that I like. That's a good point for now. But like, imagine being a civilization where nothing was discovered, nothing ever. So they're like, we got to record this somehow. And we don't have written language yet. So we got to draw this shit. Yeah, I don't really draw like ever. <laughs> do you think like... <laughs> <laughs> okay okay what no, do you think that like okay because you know, if you really want to get super technical about it it's still happening history is still being written and some people stop to write it down and some people just live their lives mm-hmm. so do you think i mean there had to have been some people that were like oh i'm just enjoying this constellation and then some other people are like wait a minute well, i need to write this down we need to document this stuff yeah but yeah. okay Okay, to take your point seriously for a second, <laughs> you're like, do you draw things you don't like? Like, think about like journalists and reporters today that might write pieces about things that they don't like. We're talking about this is drawing the, versus writing. Because I, I, I write about things I, I don't like. I journal. <laughs> you know, I'm talking about I'm talking about people like before written language. That's how they recorded things. That's uh, right. Like the Charlie Kelly. What? <laughs> Never mind. No, I, 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 that's what you're saying. He didn't know how to write, so he was drawing. He just down. draws pictures. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, yes. Hello, hieroglyphs. Yeah. Yeah. Heard of them? Heard of them ever? And uh, you can see in <laughs> I've read about them. And ancient Babylonian clay tablets. They were drawing like the alignments of the planets and the stars, and you know this has just been this ancient fascination. And um, yeah, I mean, you think about it. There's this whole system. Like the the Greeks were were naming the planets after their gods, which of course the Romans came in and they're like, actually, you know, we're going to name them this. Yeah. But something I discovered today is like the Greeks did the same thing. Mm -hmm. They named the planets like Zeus, Aphrodite, whatever. Yes. And the Romans were like, actually it's Venus. Actually it's this. And that's, that stuck today. Mm -hmm. And actually they had the money. They had all the money. That's right, man. And the power. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's right, dude. That shit stuck. And, And even though they came in and renamed things, it's still very similar to each other like right the 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 symbolic meaning is still similar whether it's greek or the roman Roman religion is like virtually identical it's like literally like copied yeah it's just different names yeah but they were like we want to make sure it's our names right because obviously like before like the greeks weren't the first civilization to you know study like astronomy and study the planets and the alignments and constellations they were one of the first they were one of the first but like the babylonians did it chaldeans chaldeans the mesopotamians which are babylonians egyptians yeah Yeah, the egyptians were before the greeks so it's like i think all of them together kind of like it was this ongoing thing but i mean can you imagine dude the babylonians are like what the seventh or eighth century BC, older, older than eighth century, older than oh yeah, that would only yeah. be like that would only be like eight hundred BC. Yeah, eight or nine hundred ba- BC. Ba- uh, They're like well, thousands of years. Yeah. Oh my god, I Much can't older. even fathom it. But to you know, it's it's it always goes back to like the distraction thing, the TV thing. Like we have TV now, we have. We have freaking work lives and all this stuff to distract us, all this technology and all this shit. Like, you didn't have shit to do back then. So, obviously, somebody's sitting around, like, freaking writing this shit down and figuring out the math and shit. Except the people that built the pyramids. So I think they stayed pretty busy. You know? Well, they were slaves. So, that's <laughs> they had to stay pretty busy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> or <they're>, aliens. <laughs> I mean, if they wanted that bread. Like, like literally. Like Literal bread. bread. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But not you know, money. That's something I wish we could just like have a definitive answer on. Like who built these things? I need it. Like I need it. You know, but I was just thinking about something while we were having that talk about like how the Romans like copied the Greek system, you know, alternatively, I could see how like, okay, sure. They copied their religious system, you know, but I could see where like, okay, we want to like make our own system inspired by this one. I mean, naturally, maybe it would make sense to kind of put things like in with names from your own language yeah like i could i could see like that's completely reasonable of course you know but absolutely um something i learned today is that some of the i actually have a list i can i can call them out but some of the planets and the dwarf planets and moons like actually do have their original greek names still Um, yes oh right of course not most most of them are the roman names 
uh, Phobos. That's yeah. one of the moons. Oh, uh, the moons of Mars. Yeah. Phobos and Deimos, which are the Greek gods. Uh, Phobos is the Greek god of fear. Deimos is the Greek god of terror. Mm-hmm. Um, Damn. Right? Those would be sick if you had two dogs, two really... Uh, there are two. Dogs. There, are, there are two wolves yeah, inside of that you. That would be so, like sorry, <laughs> sorry. Terror that was just and fear. A, a thought I had out loud. <laughs> that's crazy, man. Because I don't know, bro. That's that's kind of heinous, man. That's kind of downright insidious. Because terror to me is like a fear is like ah, you know, and then terror is like ah, <laughs> yeah. So it's like, malicious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, <laughs> so yeah. Like having, if I have guard dogs in the future, you'll have to remind me that I said. But well, they gotta be like. Big ass, like Kane Corso. Like, yeah, Rottweilers or something. Crazy. I saw a Kane Corso for the first time uh, last year. Mm-hmm. You talk about a scary fucking dog. I'm all about a well trained. Uh, Have you seen a Kane dog? Corso? Mm-mm. Imagine. Never heard of it. Imagine like a, like a bully, like the meanest bully you you can imagine, and then imagine it like the size of a Great Dane. Right. Right. Yeah, dude. Oof. They're they're like they're. Uh, awesome. You seen a uh, Sandlot? Yeah, this kind of yeah, it's a dog like, yeah. from Sandlot. Isn't it a Rottweiler? No, 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 no. That's it's, not a king. Dude, a that Rottweiler. definitely is a dog. <laughs> Let me see <laughs> that, <laughs> that <laughs> dog. That's the dog from Sandlot. <laughs> so. Yeah, you're right. That is the dog from Sandlot. I yeah. thought the dog. I'm thinking of Beethoven. <laughs> 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 that's a sweetheart man that's a sweetheart you know I'm, I I will die on this hill I miss the 90s bro because we had all these movies wow you're really sticking your neck out there that's a hot take I've, I've <laughs> I mean I just missed the movies I missed the vibe where the main character was the dog and it was like <laughs> Air Bud yeah Air Bud yeah. someone told me Air Bud Gordy. was a trash movie and I almost fought them oh yeah no dude, that's them's fighting words that is sure. fighting words that's, that's fighting fucking words. dying words that's <laughs> <laughs> Beethoven, yeah. Airbud, Gordy, Babe. What is Home- Gordy? Babe is a pig. So is Gordy. Oh, okay. They're different pig <laughs> okay, movies. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and you know what? <laughs> They're different pig movies. And, and the vibe from these movies, you'll remember this if you're true. Back in these movies, the dog was always like, Master, Master. You remember? They always were trying always to please pleasing. their master. Yeah, yeah. The human master, bro. But but the human master oh. was the side character. That's true. The The dog was the main character. <laughs> And speaking Cujo. of Cujo, well, <laughs> did y'all see that thing about um, the 2000s were as far away now as the 80s were in the 2000s? Yeah, That's I crazy, dude. I, I, yeah. hate, I hate that. And, and then, speaking oh, well. of pigs, man, I do have a story. <laughs> okay. I have a true story, and then I'm going to move back into the planets, planets. but I was going to bring this up on the episode anyway. Planet of the um, Tell me about pigs. So yesterday, it's 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 gonna be like a little bit of a winding road. That's okay. I know you're passionate about the subject. Well, I mean, it's just it's oh. it's it's gonna end up right where it belongs. That's and you guys just have to hang I'm in there. I'm just here for the ride. So yesterday was me and Jenny's 11 year dating anniversary. Congratulations. Thank you. That's beautiful. That's awesome. So we go to dinner, and it was just this dive bar. But the reason we wanted to go there is because I had pierogies. Mm-hmm. And Jenny's like super into pierogies. Love pierogies. And we've been talking about going to this place for like two years. So we were like, let's go. Let's just feast on, you know, pierogies and junk food and, you know, keep it real low key, whatever. Um, so we go there. We get back around, I don't know, like 730, pretty early. And as I'm parking and getting out of my car, my neighbor across the, the street here is like, Ryan, Ryan, come here. And I'm like, okay. And I walk over there and there's these two strangers that were biking through the neighborhood and my neighbor and his wife were talking to these this couple who was biking through and he was like this young lady here uh used to live in your house and i was like no way she grew up in this house in the 1990s what so i was like come in and i took them all in and i just let her i gave them the full tour let them go through every room and she was just like melting down, like, oh my God, this was the guest room was her room. Oh, let no her way. see the studio. I was like, was this your room? No, 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 it was that one. And um, a lot of our stuff, like the, the guest bathroom over here, the floor, the uh, the tile. The, Did she, the, was she, when she saw this room, was she like, what the fuck? <laughs> oh, they were like, what is it about? Yeah. I'm, I'm going there. Oh, okay. And they saw the tile, they saw the counter. It was all the original from when she grew up, oh, like here in awesome. the guest room. The hardwood floor, just like I've been telling you guys original 
and um, the layout of like the kitchen. She showed me pictures from the 90s. Like it was just really trippy. That's cool. Because my whole life I've always been like, I wish I could do that. So why don't I let her come in? Come on. And, you know, we just had a great, they ended up being here for like three hours. Um, just, they start, oh, you guys do a podcast. What's it about? And I'm like, <laughs> uh, you know, it's, it's about this, that, and the other. And, and God bless her. Jenny was kind of helping me out. Well, this is what they talk about. You know, I don't like to talk about it to people if I don't know them. So Jenny's kind of laying it out there. And, um, anyway, so towards the end of the tour, about two hours in, we start to walk outside and, um, it was just really pleasant and we get outside and my neighbor was like, you know, in the house right over there, not the one across, but two houses to the left. The previous homeowner had a pet pig. And this pig would get out a lot. And the cops would be called on him. And one day, the cops were <laughs> on called the on Manny. because Is that the pig? Yeah. Because he would be roaming the neighborhood. And people thought it was a wild hog. <laughs> and the police came and they were going to take him to animal control. And my neighbor was like, I'll walk him home. I'll walk him home. And he, he would walk him home sometimes. <laughs> But on a particular day with not the previous homeowner of this house, my house, but the one before him, um, the garage was open and the door was open. So my current neighbor was chasing the pig, <laughs> chased him into the garage and the pig got into my house. So at one point, oh my god! <laughs> at one point, this house has been blessed by a pet pig. At one point, there was a hog in my living room, <laughs> right where I sit and chill. Was it Alex's hog? I, I mean, if you did have a hog named Manny, bro, dude, you have to get a pet pig now. That's what I'm saying, bro. Like, what are the odds of that? I think that, that there was a pig in my living room. Look, man, you take that as whatever sign you may or may not want to, but I think it's a sign that you need to get a pet pig. It was definitely a crazy, like, mind expansion for me. <laughs> and then we walked him out of the front yard, and then we saw about 25 orbs. No way. Yeah. With the, the people? Uh-huh. And, and they were sitting out there like, oh, my God. And, and you're they, like, that's what the show is about. Pretty much, yeah. That's wild. So we all had a little consciousness expansion last night. <laughs> Thanks to the pig. Thanks to the pig, and then they got to see the orbs. But true story. Wow, that's cool. Casey told me that that the previous owners, you had like bumped into them or met them or something. I didn't know that like they came in and saw everything and then like. Well, I never met the previous owners. These people were like from the nineties. Like, right, right. She the grew people, up here. Right, the people yeah. people who used to live here. Yeah. Um. But I didn't know that they like came in and saw everything. And then I definitely did not know that they saw orbs. Yeah. So in all seriousness, I was going to tell that story anyway. But the pig was wow. a perfect segue. But um, yeah, dude, it was crazy. I mean, they were just popping up left and right. And like the bizarre thing is usually when this happens, there's an intention. I didn't have this intention. I didn't have the intention to skywatch with these people. I didn't even want to talk about it. I was just showing them the house and it's like, how do I address the elephant in the room that, you know, what the podcast is about? We get out there and sure as shit, dude, the orbs just started appearing and I saw one distinctly for about five seconds and I was like, should I point it out? Should I not? Mm -hmm. And I decided in my brain, the fact that they're appearing means that I have a duty to point it out. Mm -hmm. um, There's a reason. And that's why they appear. And they were seeing them and they were totally open to it. And, and the boyfriend, uh, again, I'm not naming names, obviously, yeah. but the boyfriend of the, the lady who grew up here, he turned out to be like really into this stuff. He had heard of Skinwalker Ranch. I was like, oh, dude. No way. You know, and it was just crazy. It was the craziest synchronicity. Like if we did not get home from our anniversary dinner at that precise exact, moment yeah. where she was outside. And the funny thing is like when my neighbor um saw her outside they were walking their bikes and he was like he's just a friendly guy uh -huh. he just talks to everybody that passes through i mean he's the kind of guy when i was moving in here um and i didn't live here yet he was like coming into my garage at night make sure the tools were installed and he's just a friendly guy he's yeah. like you know and he walks out to her and he's like why, why are you walking your bike you're supposed to be riding it and she was like well you know i really wanted my boyfriend to see where i grew up so wow i got to have the opportunity to like help her see this house that she hasn't seen in 30 years oh my god that she's like constantly wishing she could go down memory lane and then we all saw the orbs it was really bizarre yeah imagine what like a crazy magical night that was for her like not only did she get to come and see her childhood home but then like she saw something completely mind-blowing right the, in the same night like that must have felt really, really crazy. By the time they left, it's, it's it was like 10 o'clock. It was like it was t 
a thousand percent. It's fate. Like exactly. She. I'm. Mean, it, it's that she happened to be here at the exact moment that you guys were getting home, and then if that wasn't enough, like she saw orbs. Like they were there. I feel like they were there for her. Yeah. God, that's. Crazy. I had the feeling it was it was there for her and her boyfriend, but also my neighbors. Real, oh, you're you're across the street. Neighbor saw him too. They all yeah. They came on the I didn't, with us. Oh yeah. no way. Yeah. and they were just like, "Wow, this is cool." <laughs> like Whoa. you know, my neighbor was like, <laughs> he was like, he's he's a funny guy. He was like, "So what are they?" I was like, <laughs> he was just. So y'all like, haven't talked about this never at all. No. Oh my god. No. What a cool like. And and see when I bought the house back in March and I started meeting him like day one of buying the house, I walked up to him and said, "Hey, here, you know, here's my name." We exchanged numbers. He took me on a little tour of his garage and and you know he was friends with the previous homeowner. And I was like, "Well, when I'm done with the work, I'll give you a tour of all the new work." So yesterday I was like, oh, "Well, come in because you haven't seen the renovations yet." So all f the the four of them came through the house. My neighbors and the couple. So when we're seeing the orbs, he's like, well, what are they? And I was like, uh, you know, it's <laughs> like, I'm in this strange situation when people ask these questions where it's like, how do I say this in a way that they will understand? Yeah. You know? So I was like, oh, well, you know, it's complicated and it's a long story. He's like, cool. I want to hear it. And I'm like, oh, uh, come on. That's amazing. Yeah. And I was like, well, you know, and Jenny starts giving me you know help here and she's like well his father in 2007 had an encounter in this and this and this and then he was missing for four hours and he was like he was missing yeah and i was like yeah well you know i don't like to say the a word and he was like what a word and i was like you know like abduction like i don't like that word but he was missing and they couldn't find him he goes uh when i was a little kid um no i used to always think Ah, gee, I wish I would be abducted by aliens. <laughs> ah, gee. <laughs> <laughs> it was just like... A, ah, gee. I, it was just dis, it was disarming because usually when I'm telling this story to people that have no knowledge of this, they're like, hmm. Okay. And they don't ask questions and they're like, this is crazy. You know, mm -hmm. but it was just like how open they were to everything and just like without even a thought without the thought in my mind like gee i wish they could see it just started appearing and i i had the distinct sense like not only is this insane and i've never experienced this before uh but i did feel like they were meant to see and like it was fate it was weird that is so incredible dude that's like a vortex of like like three different timelines converging and having like this special moment all at one time and there were insane synchronicities too like um the girl i'm just gonna say the girl even though she's older than me but yeah. you know the the girl who lived here um her i think her uh her stepmother's name is jennifer wow her father's name is chris what um the boyfriend's sister's name was jennifer so there was all these like other synchronicities too at play and plus it was, you know, our 11 year anniversary. So it was like kind of a special day for me and Jenny. And then, you know, we get home from dinner at like seven, seven thirty, And then next thing you know, we're hanging out with our neighbors <laughs> on our anniversary till like 10, 10 30 PM. It that was is so weird. Really, really bizarre and awesome. Yeah. That's such a cool thing. That's it was like an interesting a, day. That's so epic. And so now like the ice is broken. Like you don't, you, you know, with the neighbors and uh, yeah. stuff like, yeah. He was like, come to think of it, I saw your dad's booth, but I didn't know what it was at the <laughs> Azalea Festival. And I was like, well, you, you probably didn't realize who it was because I wasn't there till Sunday. Uh -huh. He was like, yeah, I could have sworn I seen your dad's booth. And I was like, yeah, we, we had a booth. So anyway, you know, wow, ta dude. talking about pigs, you know. but <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, talking about pigs. Let's man. talk about some planets. Let's talk about, what's your favorite planet? Me? Yeah. You got one? I Al do. You, you do? Yeah, well, how about you? Me go? Yeah, Neptune. Me. You go. Why? Neptune? It's blue. Oh, Pluto. And it's too. like the the water. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Alex. <laughs> it's, like, it's like the, the water. <laughs> that's what I'm sure so, that's honest. That's, I don't know anything about it. I like it. Okay. But you just said, what's your favorite planet? And I picked one like immediately. That's what I wanted. You if, did great. Thank thanks. you. I'm, I'm going to give two answers. Okay. My first answer would be, if it counts, I would say the sun. But that's not a planet. So then I'll give a planet answer. Planet of celestial the Celestial body, I should have the said sun. celestial body. But celestial yeah. body, the sun. But planet, I don't know. It's hard to say. It's between, um, it's probably between Jupiter 
And I'm not talking like esoterically. I'm just talking no. about the way it looks. Yeah. It's pretty. It's a big ball Jupiter's or whatever. Dope. Uh, That's why I picked mine. Yeah. Jupiter or... Mm, I don't know, man. I'll go with Jupiter. Also esoterically probably your favorite? Uh, esoterically would probably be... Saturn? No. No, no, no. Probably mm. Mercury. Um, no. Yeah. Probably Mercury. Mercurius. Or Jupiter. Yeah. Yeah, I think Jupiter is esoterically my favorite. Okay. But visually and in all other departments, Neptune. Neptune? Mm -hmm. Pretty dope, dude. What about you? Oh, dude, visually the Earth is the prettiest. But uh, I think like conceptually and esoterically Venus. It's okay. like, like the whole, you know, about the fungus the that lives in the clouds and shit. Mm-mm. I oh don't. My, oh, I, oh, no. Okay. Oh, this is the perfect episode to talk about this. This is this is nuts. You're not going to believe this, but it's a thousand percent real, verifiable. Look it up. There's life on Venus. Mm. There is life on Venus right now. It's been there. We don't know how long, but dude, there's this there's this species of fungus that lives in the clouds on Venus. Wow. And when it rains, this is so mind blowing when it because obviously Venus is boiling hot. So, mm -hmm. but it still has like weather cycles technically. Like it does rain. The rain just never gets to the ground. It, wow. it, it, it evaporates before it gets to the ground. But in those raindrops are tiny little spores, these little tiny, um, like fungus. fungal spores. Yeah. Like fungus creatures and they fall in the rain and they die when it gets like to the heat into the atmosphere of Venus, it, it's they boil, the water boils, the little fungus thing dies, and then the spores float back up to the clouds and they grow back into bigger little fungus and then the cycle just continues. <laughs> bigger little fungus. Bigger, <laughs> big, yeah. bigger little that. fungus. So it's like an oxymoron. It's like little, but it's a little bigger than the yeah. other, yeah. So yeah, that's I'm cool. Reading, I'm reading I didn't about know that. It. It's a constant cycle of reincarnation rebirth yeah, constantly that's, well that's so, just true with fungus yeah that's yeah in general if you google life on venus venus venus, venus it will immediately say no but what, you have to dig and then and then i got it yeah i got this uh space.com article from uh fungus and clouds on venus so that's Dude, cool no is, i did not know about that at all that is so fascinating to to me. And then the fact that at one point it was thought to be like Earth-like and right. some sort of It's like the twin sister of Earth or whatever. Because yeah. we're relatively the, the same size, right? Yeah. Yeah. And That's they, cool. they think that the two planets were very, very similar. And they pretty much know that at one point it was like it would have it would have been habitable. Like it would have supported life at one point. That's like why potentially even human life, but is Venus hotter than Mercury? I, I don't know. I don't know. I know that the whole planet. I could like, have sworn it is. Venus is like it's a hellscape. It's like hell, like straight yeah. up. It is like covered in volcanoes and lava and like. Venus is hotter than Mercury. Isn't that weird? With an average I surface figured. temperature of 167 degrees. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, 867 Ooh. degrees Fahrenheit. Like which obviously is 464 Celsius for our other worldly listeners obviously there's an explainable reason for this which i do not know but my brain is like how weird is that that venus is hotter than mercury but mercury is supposed to be like the hot planet. closer to the sun oh yeah Bro. Right. like what is the reason for that the average surface temperature on mercury is 333 degrees fahrenheit <gasps> yo that's crazy Oh, what are the odds? I think <laughs> I think Venus is hotter because it it like basically imploded. Like it's like ah. one of the few leading things that because we don't know exactly what happened, the cataclysm that happened, but one of the very most if not the most like leading theory is that like the the it it just the volcanoes became completely out of control like the magma beneath the earth came became volatile and like volcanoes just started exploding all over the planet which like, probably is they're saying it's greenhouse gases but that makes sense because that's what volcanoes is, uh, produce apparently greenhouse that's very gases interesting yeah yes. they say it's hotter than mercury because of the greenhouse gases in the atmosphere apparently it is like a thing that can domino pretty quickly like if volcanoes if all it takes from what I, from the limited stuff that I 
looked into. All it takes is like two, maybe three big eruptions at one time around a planet, and it could domino into like straight up planetary cataclysm. Dang. Which is what they think might have happened to Venus. That is really interesting. So springboarding off of that, I'm going to go into just really basically like, ob this is obvious. Everybody knows this, but it's the episode to talk about this. So like we said, the planets are named after like Greek Roman deities. Some of them dwarf planets are actually named after like, uh, uh, Hawaiian deities cool. and, and Easter Island, uh, which I thought was cool. That's cool. But, um, Mercury is the Roman name. The Greek is Hermes. And they named it that, I guess, because, it moves the quickest across the sky. Mm. And you know, Hermes is supposed to be like... The messenger. Right. Venus, obviously in Greek, that would be Aphrodite because it's the brightest planet in the night sky. Mm. So it's beautiful. It's shining. Um, Earth, the Roman name is Terra. Mm. Yeah. Terra Mater. Okay. Or Gaia. Um, and there is apparently an etymology um, with the, the name Gaia. I, I didn't like copy it down because I didn't want to go too deep into the names of those celestial bodies, but I don't know how we landed on Earth. Maybe that's not related to the mythological name, but the Greeks called it Gaia. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Mars, obviously Aries um, in the Greek. It's just because it was red. They're like, yeah, it's like red and warlike. <laughs> and um, Then we talked about the moons of Mars earlier, Deimos and Phobos, the Greek gods of terror and fear. Obviously, Jupiter is Zeus. It's the largest, pretty obvious. There are 79 moons of Jupiter. And what? most of them... Can you verify that? Because that is a pretty wild number. I just I just wrote that down. And that that's kind of like... I feel like I need to double check that. It's a freaking huge planet. Bro. 79 is a lot it's of It's a moons, ton. Bro. And they could be tiny. Some of them could be... Right, really yeah, tiny. yes. As yes. of February 2023, Jupiter... This is This is the Google AI, by the way. So, as of 2023, Jupiter has 92 confirmed moons. Yo. That's oh crazy. Oh, my God. So, from what I was seeing, most of them are named after lovers or daughters of Zeus. Cool. Um, well, there's countless of those. Dang. So Right. They'll never run out. About 92 of them. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Saturn, Cronus, Playboy. Yeah. In the Greek. 82 moons, mostly named from Greek mythology. Uranus, it's the only planet with the original Greek name. Let's go. And it's the god of the sky and the heavens. And then you have Neptune, which is Poseidon, the Greek. Um, I don't know. I didn't like see on this resource, like why did they name it? Maybe because it's blue and watery. Yeah. You know, like you were discussing. I'll find out because it's my the, favorite. The yeah, water. For sure. <laughs> uh, Neptune has 14 moons and they have Greek names. So like it's crazy that some of these celestial bodies do still have the Greek names. You know, because we were talking about in the beginning, they. It is cool. I wonder why. It's crazy, but yeah, uh -huh. it, it is cool that some of them retain their original names. Then you have the dwarf planets um, in our solar system. You have Ceres, which is Demeter. Actually, fun fact about Ceres. Um, I think so. The dwarf planets are. This this is going to sound like common sense to some people, but I feel like it's not. I, I feel like maybe this is something we learned in like the fourth grade or something a long time ago and never thought about again. Yeah. But when you think about the solar system and you always see that traditional chart of the rings, yeah. right? And it's like, you know, you, you line all the planets up in their distance from the sun, even though they're on a, like a orbital ring. Mm -hmm. Ceres is like in between, I think it's like Earth and Mars. Or it's like Mars and Jupiter. We, you'd never hear about it, almost ever. Right. But it's like right there. Like it ain't like it's far away somewhere. Like, no, it's like right here. Uh, but it's a dwarf planet. So no one really talks about it. Um, That's crazy. Eris, which is the Greek goddess of discord, the Greek name. Uh, the moon of Eris is Dysomnia, which is the daughter of Eris, again, with the Greek name. Haumea. Uh, dwarf planet from Hawaiian mythology. Cool. Make Make from Easter Island. Cool. And then you have Pluto. Rest in peace. I, you know, <laughs> I, they they nerfed. Thanks, him, Neil deGrasse Tyson. Yeah, they they nerfed him. <laughs> it's um, still a planet to me. Damn it. Oh yeah, dude. yeah. Bring it back. I thought they were considering bringing it back. Nah. Um, Hades. There's a Hades planet. It's Pluto. Oh, Pluto's oh. the Roman. Oh, duh. Um, oh and then you have the moons of Pluto, which are Charon, obviously the okay. centaur from Greek myth. Mm -hmm. um, Nyx, the Greek goddess of the night. The Hydra, the Greek monster. Uh, Styx, river in the Greek underworld, mm -hmm. you know this. And then Cerberus, 
So they're all like stuff orbiting Hades, literally. Yeah. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. Interesting. I didn't know Pluto had moons. I didn't either. That's crazy. So, yeah, that, it's just, it's fascinating to think like, I guess where I'm going with this is I wanted to talk first about like the, the mythology behind the celestial bodies. And, you know, we kind of talked about how there was the significance and the ancients would ponder and there's this mystical wonder. But, um, now we can talk about the hermetic philosophy of mm -hmm. what the planets are and how they like believed that they influenced us. Right. So, um, just going through that. So Mercury, occult significance of Mercury, obviously associated with communication, intellect, travel, Mercury is linked to the Greek god Hermes, the messenger of the gods, Hermes Trismegistus, mm -hmm. the legendary sage, um, obviously associated with the origins, said to be the fusion of the Greek Hermes and the Egyptian Thoth. The effects of the planet, according to esoteric philosophy, it's believed that this rules communication, travel, intellect, thought processes. Um, when you have an affliction in this area, it's supposed to cause misunderstandings, travel delays, or intellectual confusion. So the general esoteric belief of the planets and the influence that they exert is that they're not just physical planets like we understand today, but actually, and, and maybe they can be that and be the esoteric version too, right? Mm -hmm. Just like we are a physical fleshy body but we are also, also a, a spiritual being right yeah. same with the planets yeah so the understanding is that the planets are like planetary logo eye or logos yeah. like you know they're yeah. they're these massive ascended beings who have uh evolved to the point of being like a super consciousness wow so the belief is that these are entities and that they're consciousness has a direct influence on our consciousness and that also earth is one of these super consciousnesses according to the theosophical perspective some planets are labeled sacred planets some planets are labeled non-sacred planets it's not that they're evil or that they're not holy or whatever the sacred planets are called this from the theosophical perspective because it's believed that they have reached the enlightenment that they have gone through the phases of evolution Whoa. but that there are some planets maybe like ours uh -huh. that have not fully gone through that evolution which explains why you know look at the population today it's all crazy people are divided and there's all this disharmony and chaos so like maybe our planet is going through the process of becoming a sacred logos you know Ooh, that makes my mind go crazy it's so like, it's like planets are they are like beings like yeah. like if, even if you look at it strictly from a scientific standpoint like it has to be they have they basically have circulatory systems and yeah. nervous systems and like cells yeah exactly like it's it's like a big giant being and that it's crazy to think that like if you zoom out a little bit if there's a population on a planet the population is kind of like the cells of that being and if they are all individually reaching enlightenment then the planet will reach enlightenment right that's just making my mind go crazy yeah it's it's very fascinating to think about it is um but maybe they also are the physical thing yeah yeah you know, they yes. can they could be both just like we are both just like everything is dual you know if, if it exists in this material reality it stands to reason that it also has you know the spiritual half has above so below right Venus, um, the occult significance of that is, you know, it's obviously love, beauty, art, attraction, uh, fertility, sex, basically, you know, that's how the Greeks, um, viewed her. That's mm -hmm. why she was always, you know, hottie. Well, you know, hottie, thotty. Let's just leave it there. But, <laughs> <laughs> you know, but um, she, she was always front, you know, front. Yeah. Was she front? And about? she was backing. Oh, <laughs> <was> just, <laughs> but, <laughs> you know, but, but, um, <laughs> so that's why you know the brightest planet in the night sky was adorned with this name justly so and the hermetic connection is it embodies attraction and unity in the universe it's so bright it's it's beautiful it's you could think of venus or aphrodite also esoterically as like the mother mm -hmm. so it 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 brings forth creation mm -hmm. you know um as above so below governs the effects of the planet on us believed esoterically that it affects our areas of love beauty harmony if we're having an affliction in this area it could lead to relationship issues or lack of self-worth mars 
Occult significance, it represents drive, aggression, courage, but it embodies the principle of the, dy the dynamic force and the idea that the action in the material world is a reflection of spiritual battles within. That's crazy. That is it's so war. crazy. Makes a lot of sense, it's too. War. Like, man, that is, that's wild. But it's, it's like the inner war, you know? Yeah, it's, it's, it's mirror symbolism. Right. Yeah. So the effects on us, it's supposed to drive our ambition our energy our courage when negatively aspected it can incite unnecessary conflicts or impulses mm. so again it's like if you think about this because after we go through this i wanted to go in some of the scientific data and i, I think you found some too but um i started digging i want to go ahead and give a disclaimer there is like no sci scientific existence that i could find that exists that planets outside of Earth and then the moon and the sun have some sort of physiological change in us, some sort of influence in us. It may exist. I didn't find it. Right. I found plenty of evidence that, you know, the earth, the sun, and maybe the moon have an effect on us. So it's mm -hmm. like, okay, I still wanted to talk about what, what, what the, uh, the, the belief was that these planets have an effect on us. Yeah. You know, and I think like, it stands to reason that just because the modern scientific dogma of today has not discovered some of these things that the ancients have been claiming doesn't necessarily mean that they cannot be true. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I, I didn't find it. Yeah. You know, but I think the idea here is that just because there may not be, you know, some sort of electromagnetic physical data on waves and charts and graphs that exists that we do literally do not have the data for um that to corroborate what these ancients are saying i i still believe that like you know astrology and all of these things there has to be some level of truth to this energetically but you know don't worry because there is plenty of evidence that the sun and the earth and then again maybe the moon um do have an energetic effect on us oh yeah a, th a thousand percent for sure and i think i mean you know you can't scientifically prove consciousness either i mean you there, you can hi you can powerfully suggest it i think you can i just don't think we know how mm -hmm. right exactly that's, that's more so what i mean like Yet. you know so if if that is true then it could be possible that these these celestial bodies are having effects on us in ways we can't yet measure. Yeah, we might not just know how. Yeah, right, right. You know, that's what I'm trying to say. Yes. Like, I don't think we're at that point yet where we scientifically uh, have all of this knowledge. I, I could be very, very wrong. But I personally believe that we, uh, hypothetically, I think that um, everything that is true and actually exists can be proven. Mm-hmm. Or discovered if you know how, if you yeah. if you have developed the the tools, you know, and and I, I think that someday we will be able to prove consciousness. I think that's going to be one of the things that like helps us make that leap. Yeah, someday. I mean, look at at Newton and Einstein. They were theorizing things hundreds of years ahead of their own time that right. that were later proven when the technology was created to prove it. When right. they found a way to prove it. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. But um yeah, so Jupiter, pretty obvious there. It's the it's it's the biggest planet. It's it's expansion, abundance, uh wisdom. It represents the expansive force of the universe and the spiritual blessings that come from aligning with divine wisdom. Um the effects that it's supposed to have on us is it's it, it brings expansion, wisdom, prosperity. If there's an affliction in this area of our lives, it could lead to overindulgence. Or missed opportunities. So I don't know if you guys are noticing this theme where it's like it could be out of balance positively or negatively. Yeah. So it's like overindulgence or just completely missing out entirely. Yeah. You know, both like sides it, of the coin. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and it seems that like that's just true about astrology in general or tarot. Like if you pull a card or if you if pull it upside right, down. Yes. Yeah. It's like the yin and the yang, the light and the dark, the right. the mirror halves. Yeah. I think that's true about astrology. Like something I've noticed, just, you know, a pattern in my life is like, I do like to check astrology apps every day because I'm curious to see how it will line up. Yeah. And I have noticed some days where it's like, you're going to have a terrible day, bro. <laughs> and then it's like an amazing day. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, 
something did happen today that could have given me a terrible day, but maybe on this particular day, I was just feeling competent enough to tackle it. Mm -hmm. And then alternatively, sometimes it'll tell me, you know, you're going to have an amazing day. It's going to be a breakthrough. And I feel like shit, Mm -hmm. you know? So it's like, I don't know. Um, But it's significant one way, you know, it's significant in one way or another. Like you're saying, like you could have maybe the meaning and the reason for you to look at that horoscope on that day was so that you would try to defy it. You know what I mean? Like yeah, maybe. T- it's telling you you're going to have a bad day. So then you're like, no, I'm going to have a good day. And that was what was written in the stars to happen for you on that day. Right. Like behind the silly little app. Yes. You know, there's like a deeper meaning. To much, it. much deeper. Yeah. No, that, that, that I didn't consider it like that, but yeah. Um, but, but I mean, dude, presidents you know how many presidents have just like an on-hand astrologer right. and like consult them for like every major like uh reagan mm-hmm. reagan had one on payroll son he had that dude like anytime he made any major decision he consulted his court wizard yeah and one time it was like bro don't go out he got <laughs> shot <laughs> I don't know. yeah hey, amen don't go to Texas. Don't go to Texas. He's like, you need to stay inside and chill with the lady. You hear me? <laughs> and then he's like, well, you know, I appreciate your input, yeah. but I think I, you know, need to go out today and maybe right. get like a cheeseburger. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> then he got shot. <laughs> he should have listened, man. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's funny you said Texas. Unrelated, but in my uh, numerology findings, the foundation year for certain states and countries you know obviously has a chinese zodiac uh animal and whether or not that animal is compatible with the year you were born could um basically you have states where you would have states and countries where you have a good time and states and countries where it's always kind of a fight really yeah (laughs) you get your astrology to say hey bro stay away from wisconsin yeah yeah, 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 (laughs) no seriously like i got a i got a a whole report done and it was like you you'll do really good in these states what what did it say what did it say about north carolina for you it it doesn't it's neither good or bad but america in general is bad for me Ooh, hey because it's a it's a (laughs) monkey (laughs) Uh, america was founded in a monkey year that that is tragic I've been yeah. telling you that for years. <laughs> you, yeah. you got to get away, bro. You, you're about to. In well, a few you, weeks. you know what's really? Oh yeah, yeah. For I'm real. about to. I haven't looked up uh, France yet. Yeah, look that up. Don't. And, yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're gonna tell you it's gonna be and, fucking great. Any friend. French homies out there? But um, what was I gonna say? Everything's bigger. That's in Texas. America, man. It's getting to you. <laughs> yeah. <man. laughs> Jeez. Very All right, whatever. I don't know. Damn. It's the energy of the land, man. I'm, yeah. That's crazy. You'll think of it. I don't know if we have any French homies. I bet we do. I'm I'm sure maybe. I don't I know. Do. Sound off. I haven't gotten a message from one. French homies, sound off. We did the analytics. Uh, we, we all got together. I think it was last Sunday, and I don't remember discussing France. But Also, if there's any of y'all chilling in Greece, um, that'd be cool. There's probably like one, if any. Maybe a half of a guy. I think we're like... Well, we got like 7% of a guy in here. <laughs> <laughs> it's That's nine. True. Yeah, it's about nine. It's nine. I haven't That's checked true. in a while. It might have gone up. <laughs> Bro, we're killing it in California, though. Yeah, we are. California loves us. Yeah, surprisingly. Yo, if we cut your fingers off, there'll be less of you statistically making the Greek part more... I need more. to start losing limbs. Yeah. Yeah, that's actually then your Greek percentage will go up that's because there's point. less of a total. No, that's actually true. Because at first I didn't believe you, but then I thought about it. That that makes a lot of sense. I have to cut off the parts of me that aren't Greek looking. But but what that's if that's what I have to do? But what if like just hear me out, man? What if some of that Greek is like concentrated in his that's fingers? That's what I'm worried about. Yeah, are these Greek hands? I don't know. <laughs> I need to find the parts of me that are not Greek. And Does the camera make my hands look small? Don't look at my hands. <laughs> I, I kind of have You know what hands. they say about small hands, man? Small gloves. A shitty ass handshake. <laughs> Saturn. Saturn. I'm almost done with the planets. Uh, got a few. Yeah, a few more. Um, the occult significance. It symbolizes boundaries, limitations, discipline, and time. And that makes sense. It's like father time, you know? Um mm. It, it's it's cool when you think about like the myth and then like the esoteric and how that you know aligns with the myth. This um, is Saturn slash Kronos, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
It teaches the lessons of the material world, the cycles of birth, death, and rebirth. It's also associated with the alchemical processes of transformation. It represents, and in the areas that it affects us, it represents discipline, time, and karma. The challenges from Saturn often manifest as delays, time-related, restrictions, boundaries, um, imprisonment, you could say, Mm. um, or heavy responsibilities. The sun, it represents the self, vitality, the core essence of, of being, of existing. It stands for the divine spark within each individual and the journey towards enlightenment. It uh, governs vitality, ego, the core self, um, issues of identity, health, self-expression. That's like the areas it's really supposed to affect us in. The moon, emotions, intuition, subconscious mind. It mirrors the mysteries of the inner world, the unconscious reflecting the hermetic principle of correspondence between the inner and the outer worlds. Um, It influences emotions, moods, your intuition, if you have an affliction in the area of your moon where your moon is aligned, you know, astrologically, it could lead to mood swings, emotional sensitivity, or confusion. Yeah, Almost it's always been related to mood. Isn't that where the word lunatic comes from? Yeah, I was going to talk about that oh, a little cool, bit. Because cool. I'm almost done with this and we're going to get into the science. Okay, cool. Um, uh, occult significance of Uranus is that it symbolizes innovation, rebellion, and sudden insights. The hermetic connection is that it disrupts and brings forth new ways of thinking, echoing the hermetic emphasis on progressive revelation and the evolution of thought, um, innovation, change, rebellion. Uh, the, the challenges might involve unexpected upheavals or restlessness. I would be curious if you could look this up for me, if you could see if there's some sort of mythological connection between Uranus and Lucifer. Um, Neptune represents dreams, illusions, spiritual visions. Um, it delves into the depths of the collective unconscious and the mysteries beyond the veil, similar to the hermetic pursuit of hidden truths. The way it's supposed to affect us is that it's your dreams, intuition, spiritual connections. Um, an afflicted Neptune can lead to illusions, deceptions, or lost boundaries. And the last one, Pluto. Because remember, it used to be a planet, so I figured why not count it. Um, the ancients, you know, gave it the mythological significance. It's transformation, rebirth, the unseen forces of the underworld. The transformative energy aligns with the alchemical processes in hermetic philosophy. D- was it on? Is it Lucifer? <laughs> Dude, I'm laughing because I, <laughs> I Googled Uranus and Lucifer, and it's all blade blade shit. Beyblade. Bay- Beyblade. Bay- <laughs> Apparently, there's two. Let pieces, it rip. There's two, <laughs> there's two pieces of of a Beyblade. Yo, wait, you can't say it. You can't say he said Beyblade. Oh, I'm here. Beyblade. There you go. There's two pieces. <laughs> One's called a, a Uranus, and the other piece is Lucifer. And apparently, it's a popular company. No way. <laughs> so <laughs> confirm. <laughs> <laughs> There's a mythological the connection, connection yeah. between Uranus yeah. and Lucifer. Beyblade episode? Yeah. Bro, let's go. Yo, dude. Except it's just us ripping it for like an hour. Yes. An yeah. hour straight. We'll dude. get the little stadium and shit. Yes. And did we'll, you ever have Beyblades, y'all? No. I, my friends did. I would play with my friends. Yeah, my friends yeah. did. Our our block, our street was, it was on site, <laughs> bro. Like you'd see, you'd see one Actually, of my little friends. They were walking down the street with that little stadium. They they bring that shit over. Mm-hmm. They, that's how we would settle beefs yeah <laughs> got that cord yeah you know? yeah <laughs> fight me in the ring ah, <laughs> it, yeah. yeah that shit was serious yeah. yes it was so confirmed confirmed a thousand percent um last one pluto i, I i'm just gonna start back because we stopped in the uh the beginning of it transformation rebirth and the unseen forces of the underworld Pluto's transformative energy aligns with the alchemical processes in hermetic philosophy, which seek to transmute base materials into spiritual gold. Um, The effects it's supposed to have on us are transformation, rebirth, and deep unconscious forces. Challenges often involve deep-seated fears, power struggles, or intensive transformations. Okay, we're done with the mythological. Here we are an hour in. (laughs) So (laughs) let's, let's focus on the science. Something I found is that there is a lot of data now about the Schumann resonance, mm-hmm. the, yeah, yeah. the electromagnetic frequency of the earth. What's the Schumann resonance? So basically they discovered that I think it was like every second there's 50 to a hundred lightning strikes 
around the world constantly. And there's this layer of the earth called the ionosphere where they can measure the electromagnetic frequency emitted by these lightning strikes in waveforms. So they set up these stations around the planet and there's like multiple ways that they can get this data. I think it's like these massive standing towers and they have these like horizontal, I don't, you know, I don't care about the specifics of how they do it. I don't know. But what they found is that by having these, um, these stations all over the earth, they can measure a constant electromagnetic frequency of the earth. And sometimes it can spike. And I think I read that it can spike up to like shocking numbers, like 45 or 50 Hertz, which the base level is 7.83. So it can, it, it can spike really high. That's tremendous. Yeah. Or it can go pretty low. Um, so it's 7.83 Hertz, which is interesting because if you think about the frequencies of the brain, you have a frequency band from Delta all the way up to Gamma. And these are states of mental activity. So Delta is anywhere from zero to four Hertz. And then when you go from four to about eight Hertz, um, that's Theta, which is dreams. I forgot to say what Delta was, but it's like deep sleep, no dreams, just deep sleep. Mm. Then you have Theta, which is intense meditation, um, dreaming, restoration of the body, the healing processes. Um, then when you go up from like eight to about, I think it's 12 Hertz, you have alpha. It could be 10 Hertz. I'm not sure, but it's eight to 10 to 12 Hertz. You have alpha, which is like, uh, it, they call it like wakefulness, rested wakefulness, mm-hmm. like kind of like really relaxed. You're maybe light meditation. Maybe you're watching a movie and you just kind of have your brain turned off, but you're not like, Oh, yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. You, you just kind of like very relaxed. Chill. Yeah. Um, uh, maybe the flow state, you know, mm. like mm. not a lot of intense thinking and complex strategizing and problem solving going on, but you're alert. Yeah. Then you have beta, which is like, uh, work, 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 work. You know, you're, you're thinking you're, you're constantly mentally active and you're in a very high mental state, um, solving math equations, challenging, uh, tackling challenging problems, you know, just your typical brainwave state throughout the day for 99% of the world Mm -hmm. is mostly beta. And then you have gamma, which is like, I think it's like up to like 40 Hertz and beyond, which is like extreme levels of focus and very high levels of mental activity. Um, and it's cool because there's a lot of data that shows that like the brain being in these different States, these different wave bands has different healing effects on the body. Oh, really? Yes. I thought it was just like theta that is kind of a healing frequency. Well, like even gamma. There, there were some studies that show that like being in the gamma state for certain amounts of time, I think like alleviates symptoms of depression and anxiety and, and certain mental issues. So it's like there's definitely this broad field of studying how the mind and the body and spirit are affected by these frequency bands, which brings me to another really important subject that I'm not going to go deep into, but just bring it to people's awareness, which is Monroe, Mm. you know, yeah. while we were there, they showed us this whole documentary about why the frequencies work binaural beats and how you can entrain the brain to get into these theta wave states. Theta is the magic. Theta is like, you know, where the serious stuff happens. Like when you do the, um, the Monroe, uh, meditations they're they're getting you to theta yeah they're getting you to that threshold where you're like on the boundary of falling asleep interesting the schumann resonance is in theta yeah that's yeah that's wild so there's data that is basically supporting that the earth go figure is constantly pulsing this theta wave frequency yeah right 7.83 hertz putting your feet on grass, right? Connecting with the electromagnetic frequency of the earth or, uh, I don't know, and training your brain to be to this frequency, yeah. literally going 7.83 Schumann Hertz resonance, putting on the headphones and training your brain. You, you can literally force your body to get into these states. And I'm going to read from this study where they found out about the effects of grounding and sleep. It's, uh, let me see here. It's like the earth wants you in a theta like frequency in a theta state, you know, it's resonating that. Absolutely. I feel like it's in the same way that, um, 
that the water on like what what is the the cymatic cymatics, cymatics. Yeah. yeah like the the frequency affects what's around it so i think yeah resonant affected, frequency that's a great resonant like, frequency we are the water and right it, well we're 70 percent water right we yeah that's that's, that's going to come up in the moon conversation uh, uh you know because the push and pull of the tides yeah. oh yeah yeah cycle. that was the yeah. belief yeah right but um so let's just from this scientific the inspired performance institute um, Dr. Winifred Otto Schumann, a German physicist, first predicted the existence of the resonance in 1952. He came up with this concept while teaching about atmospheric electricity. I'm just kind of paraphrasing. Uh, Schumann was working on mathematical equations to describe the electrical properties of the Earth and the behavior of electromagnetic waves within the ionosphere cavity. Uh, basically, they realized, just like I said, they found approximately 7.8 hertz or 7.83 hertz um, is the Schumann resonance mm -hmm. is the alpha theta brain. It's the threshold between alpha and theta. The Schumann is mm -hmm. uh, that grounding frequency. When humans tune into the 7.83 frequency, they experience numerous benefits that are all backed by science, um, such as enhanced memory and learning, improved stress tolerance, emotional balance, grounding. There's a Japanese study um, conducted in 1956 where they took, I'm sorry, it was conducted in like 2009. They took 56 adults and they found that your blood pressure is actually significantly lowered over time by being exposed to the Schumann resonance. So, Oh, I totally believe that. Very powerful effects just by being exposed to this frequency, right? Lowered blood pressure may lead to improved mood and reduced stress levels they found from being exposed to this this. Um, this frequency for anyone who wants to read the study it's called does the schumann resonance affect our blood pressure so there are more studies that show like basically there's implications that it impacts our circadian rhythm so when we talk what is the circadian rhythm the eyes are these complex the way that they're connected to the pineal gland, right? So the pineal gland is what everybody thinks of as the third eye. It sits at the seat right here above your um, eyebrows and your nose in the center. There's these optic nerves in the pineal gland that are connected to our eyes. So every day that we're going outside and we're exposed to light, basically. So you wake up in the morning, you go outside, you, you, know, you get direct sunlight. The pineal gland is receiving the data from that light transmitted from your eyes right so there's this thing called the circadian rhythm mm -hmm. where the human mind and body functions on an actual 24-hour clock we might not consciously know like oh what time is it i don't know the body knows natural it's natural because yeah. it's programmed by the sun yeah right so they've actually found in addition to the sun affecting our circadian rhythm and blood pressure and other things like mood and and um other various illnesses and diseases, uh, the Schumann resonance affects our circadian rhythm. And there was a study that shows that when you sleep with being exposed to the Schumann resonance, which is grounding, it has a, like significant effects on mood, mental performance, memory, all kinds of amazing positive benefits, healing, right? So interesting because your mother-in-law, Alex, when we were at that party last weekend, I went and me and Jenny went and was chatting with her for a while. And yes, I know he's not married yet. Okay. <laughs> it's just easier. Um, but your mother-in-law, we were talking. I'll be two weeks away when this comes out. Woo! Pretty much. Yeah. So it's just easier to assume, you know, mother-in-law. It's easier to say than you're soon to be mother-in-law. And now I've spent all this time <laughs> explaining. <laughs> you fell right into Blend my yourself. trail. You know, so this just feels like the whole things against me so anyway <laughs> the the whole whole thing. Thing. What no but her? seriously we got to talking man and um we had a really amazing chat and she was telling me and jenny that every night for the past maybe a few months or so she's been sleeping with a grounding blanket it's like what's a, a grounding, grounding blanket? blanket yeah right i was like what's a grounding blanket Cop copper blanket well i don't I had to guess she said there's like silver in it and she plugs it into the wall and i think there's like some sort of copper node uh, or something oh. It well, emits yeah, a grounding frequency. Your what? home, your home, uh, all of your electric in your house is grounded. Okay. So that, that makes that's sense. That's the key. That's, there's two. Well, I'm not going to get all nerd about. Please and do. Speak nerd. out of turn about electricity, but basically you have, you have a hot side and a ground. Right. 
So your ground goes to earth. And if your ground gets interrupted, that it, your stuff don't work. Um, so yeah, that makes sense. Instead of running a copper wire outside and digging it into the ground, plugging a blanket into the outlet of your house will eventually find its way to ground. That does make sense. I never thought about it like that. What is the purpose of this grounding blanket? Well, okay. So it's not like a full blown blanket. It's like a strip of cloth that has materials in it, like silver, copper. And I guess that's why you plug it in. That makes sense. Um, because it's grounding to the wiring yeah. of the house. So your body's electric, right? Uh huh. And, um, grounding yourself. So walking outside barefooted, that's grounding yourself. Right. But if you lay on conductive material, and that conductive material goes outside into ground and is grounded, then you therefore are grounded. Yeah. So, so it's like a strip of blanket, right? Yeah. It's not like something, you know, cuddle up in and you lay it on the bed. Okay. It's, it's, it's so like, you lay on top of it. Yeah. It's maybe like this wide and okay. it just covers the surface of the bed and you plug it in. So it's grounding blanket, but it's really not even a blanket. So your mother-in-law told me and Jenny Coincidentally, we started having this conversation because we found out at the Azalea Festival that we see the same massage therapist, uh, <laughs> Zeke. Shout out the, Zeke. The, the one and only magical Zeke, who's um, just an amazing guy, and we hit it off, and you know he's in our Discord. He's, and he's the best. Yeah, we, we've played magic with him. And, yeah. You know, we need, we Me should and definitely... him went to Waffle House together. Really? Yeah. yeah. yeah I didn't the, know that. It was we dropped... the weekend of the Azalea Festival. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. We, we dropped your dad off and walked someone to the hotel and... Then went to Waffle House. That's sick, dude. I didn't know that. Zeke is the dude. He's really just like the coolest guy. Yeah. Um. Anyway, so we found out that um, she sees the same guy because we all bumped into each other at the Zelia Festival. And it was like, what? How do you guys know each other? So this past weekend, me and Jenny went up to her and, she, and we were like, when's the last time you seen Zeke? And she was like, Tuesday. <laughs> we were like, oh, shit. It's been, you know, I've been like months we've been too busy but it was just funny and then she started saying you know i started sleeping with this grounding blanket and i've had it for i'm just gonna say a few months because this I, I don't remember but she was like and and i my life has it's flipped like she said that she is feeling so much better aches in her body are like disappearing she's starting to feel like she can get around better and that she's just dramatically improving with her health. Wow. And she said it's so noticeable that when she saw Z uh, Zeke on Tuesday that he was giving her a massage and he literally was like, uh, what are you doing? Uh -huh. Like, are you doing something different? Like you feel not so tight mm -hmm. like you used to. I mean, this is somebody that she sees two weeks. This is why I brought up the Zeke thing in the, in the blanket. She sees this guy every two weeks. He's literally I don't mean this in a bad way, but like invasively, you know, feeling yeah. her muscles like yeah. in a very close way uh -huh. for years, every two weeks. And she sleeps with this grounding blanket recently. And he's like, what are you doing? You're, you're, you're getting better. I thought you were going to say that he recommended the blanket to her. So how did she learn about it? I don't, I don't know. She's into this kind of stuff. She she's is. Like, yeah. She's really she's into on this a, stuff. She's I, without like going into it, but she's on a journey to she's like actively learning about all of this stuff i had no idea super yeah. into the podcast she's like, a big dude fan she, of us. this is the first time she's, hearing about it really she like likes ryan and jenny and likes the show and she supports has us read the dude. book and like she'll go and talk to ryan about it. she don't tell me that well, you so don't ask cool, though <laughs> you know she told ask. me the other night man she she said that uh she she's bought the book for all of her friends and i'm like so yeah. wow i was like wow you you really are into this aren't you i she gave her no at all yeah. yeah i gave i bought i gave her a copy she's cool she man. gave it away and i guess has purchased and given away and purchased and given away wow yeah. that's so sick I mean, I only met her the one time at, at yeah. Azalea Festival. So, I mean, I just truly had no idea. That's so cool. Yeah, it's pretty so cool, man. This, um, I had to tell that story because I like linking like real world, you know, um, evidence. But then we have the scientific evidence. Let me just get the year of this study real quick, just if anyone wants to read it. But I grabbed an excerpt. Um, this was done in... 2023, the influence of electromagnetic fields on the circadian rhythm, again, you know, sleeping while exposed to um, the grounding frequency of the Schumann resonance, implications for human health and disease. Okay, so they found in this study, people who sleep grounded reported better quality of sleep, 
showed reduced levels of nighttime cortisol, which is stress. Uh. Levels of cortisol monitored during the day were also more synchronized with the circadian rhythm, which again is that sleep-wake cycle for those out there who, who are new to this concept. Anecdotal evidence suggests that grounding may reduce the effects of jet lag, possibly reinduce, uh, reinforcing the effects of the Schumann resonance. If grounding provides benefits via the Earth's electromagnetic frequencies and electrons from the global electrical circuit, it is likely that sunspots, solar storms, seasonal weakening of the geomagnetic field, and local geomagnetic anomalies may at times interfere with these effects, which, spoiler, they do. And I'm going to talk about that in the part about the sun, because right now we're focusing on the Earth. You know? Yeah. Um, they found that... Yeah, basically, along with the Schumann resonance, there's multiple studies where they had this idea. They're like, okay, so we have all this data that the Schumann resonance is like literally grounding people and healing people. How can we measure this in relation to the sun and solar flares? And they found that at times when coronal mass ejections were really high, there were sometimes dramatic spikes in the Schumann resonance. Meaning there is a correlation between the energy that is being outputted by the sun and then the energy that is being outputted by the earth. It sounds like common sense, right? But now we're talking like scientific yeah. proof of this. And then they go so far as to say that they have found that sometimes when the Schumann resonance is dramatically spiked, which by the way, you guys might not be aware of this, but it has been for the last few months. I remember we, we brought up graphs and stuff. You, yep. Yeah. You had, you were showing us. I that. think yesterday there was a major spike. Wow. Um, and lately there have been more spikes than like pretty much ever. Um, anyway, so they found that at many times when the shoe, it's not every time it's not guaranteed. That's just not how the world works. But many times when the uh, Schumann resonance is dramatically spiked, there are earthquakes around the world. Now, if you think about it, it would make sense that that doesn't sure. happen every time. Sure. Just, just because your immune system might not, you know, it might be a little low doesn't mean you're guaranteed to get sick. Exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah. But there's a correlation there. Earthquakes in the resonance of the earth. So again, it's like we ponder the question from a scientific perspective. How do these celestial bodies affect us? I was going to say, this is enough to tell me. I know we were saying earlier we can't verifiably say. I was talking about sure. the other planets. Well, I'm I'm saying the other planets. Like, the, why would the sun have this profound effect on us and not these other celestial bodies? Because it's all bigger. Here? You know, that's all I it is. Mean, no, yeah. it's just, it's bigger. We feel it more readily. But, but even Jupiter... They're like, uh, you know, when Jupiter, the moon, or sorry, Jupiter, the sun, and Earth all line up, Jupiter literally pulls us out really? of- Really? Yes. Dude, Isaac Newton, he, he called this the two-body problem. He had this whole thing. You know, Isaac Newton, quick tangent, this, this mother- Fucker was a genius. He was a Rosicrucian too. Dude, he's he's so badass. He he I mean, dude, invented calculus on a dare at twenty five, by the way. Twenty five uh, years old. Are you shitting me? Yeah, that's wild. I don't even I can't even do calculus. Like I'm thirty. He invented it at twenty five. The laws of motion, the laws of optics, the laws of gravitation. And then yeah, he studied the planets and he saw like, hold up, we are getting pulled by Jupiter every time we line up with the sun. How is that not throwing us completely out of whack all the time? Then he came up with something called the three body problem, yeah. which is that there is a third body somewhere. He calls it God. Interesting. I'm only aware of that term because a show recently came out on Netflix called that. Right. I haven't seen it, yeah. but I, I knew that that was some sort of um, terminology, but I didn't look into it. So that That's what I'm trying to say, bro. I, th that was my disclaimer earlier was like, just because we don't have the freaking pencil on the paper data about the other planets, it stands to reason that like they exist in this universe too. They have to exert some form of influence beyond- They do what we know i believe it i'm all in on it i i really am i feel like you know when you understand how the earth and the sun and the moon are affecting us the only difference between those bodies and the other planets are they're either smaller in the case of all the other bodies compared to the sun or they're just farther away yeah in the case of the other bodies compared to the moon yeah but they 
have to, if the earth is emitting frequencies, if the sun is emitting frequencies, if we human beings are emitting frequencies, if the cell in your arm is emitting frequencies, why would the other bodies not? They no, have we talked to. about it in the frequency episode. Like everything with mass emits a frequency. Right. Everything does. And the bigger the mass, the bigger like the frequency, like the, the further it goes out, you know, right. the bigger the effect. But I mean, yeah, this dude... Isaac Newton was one of the smartest people to ever live. Maybe the smartest, like it lit one of the most intelligent people of all time. And even he, dude, he was figuring out things that they were trying to figure out for thousands of years. He was filling the gaps that were started by the Greeks, the Egyptians, the Mesopotamians. Like he was solving like all mathematically. Of it. Yes. At 26 years old, it's still to this day completely solid, a thousand percent. The math that he created not only like solves the the gravity equation for earth but literally every celestial body in the entire universe it all is consistent the equations that he made work for every celestial body out there and even he was like but there's some stuff we can't explain and that's god well that makes sense because he was a rosicrucian yeah so he was like spiritually inclined but he also had access to secret hidden knowledge that wasn't available to the masses mm -hmm. so he's like you know really implying something there but i mean come on yeah so it's just cool like even yeah. one of the most profound prolific science scientists of all time is still like but there's some ooky spooky stuff that right we, that we can't explain it, it has to be yeah so then the last study I had on the uh, the Schumann resonance, and then we're going to move to the sun, was this is from, the study is called the synchronization of human autonomic nervous system rhythms with geomagnetic activity in human subjects. So the results of this study are consistent with other studies showing that changes in solar and geomagnetic activity correlate with changes in human nervous system activity. Overall, the study suggests that daily autonomic nervous system activity not only responds to changes in solar and geomagnetic activity, geomagnetic being obviously the earth and then solar being the flashes from the sun, but it is synchronized with time varying magnetic fields associated with geomagnetic field line resonances and Schumann resonances, mm. a likely explanation for how solar and geomagnetic fields can influence human nervous system activity is through a resonant coupling between our nervous systems and geomagnetic frequencies, or also known as Alfvin waves. That's one word, Alfvin, hmm. or ultra low frequency standing waves in the earth ionosphere resonant cavity, i.e. the Schumann resonances that overlap with physiological rhythms. Bruh, he's well. literally saying that we are built to resonate with the frequency of the earth. He's positing. He's like, you know, obviously maybe... The likely explanation is we are designed to resonate with this frequency. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a pulse. Almost like all the hippies that are like, go hug a tree. Yeah. Yeah. We're yeah. right. No, it's it's true. It's true. It's like we're the, the, the vascular system of the earth and it's like pulsing out like this frequency. Or maybe we're the moving. cells. Yeah. Yes. Maybe the trees are the vascular system. I don't know. Yeah. Not to be literal, but. Yeah. You know, yeah. and the plants and stuff, mm -hmm. the breathing, the blood and the oxygen. But yeah. dude, it's just, it's crazy when you really think about how funny and how not only funny, but like precise the universe is that we have all of this massive body of mystical, spiritual, philosophic knowledge that spans thousands of years that are like meditate. Some are like, say, ohm, which you sent me that video that's like when you hum, you create not, uh, nitric oxide in the brain, which they even measured in cows, that them mooing, it's creating nitric oxide in the brain. Mm -hmm. um, we have all of these spiritual practices that were supposed to, you know, more or less ground us, make us centered, make us more at peace, make us able to deal with problems and, and feel more like centered right and then we find in modern times through electroencephalograms that those brainwave states that we reach through meditation and through implementing a lot of these practices literally is the same frequency that the earth is pulsing yeah yeah it's honestly magical it's magical it really is it's comical it, it is. It's too pinpoint dead accurate. It's, it's, it, it is kind of comical. Like it's how, how insanely specific that is. It feels like magic. Yeah. 
Like we're on a big, but it is magic. Yeah, we're on a big rock that's resonating this this healing frequency for all of us that lulls us to sleep and allows us to be creative and like, yeah, it's incredible. It's so cool. But we're surrounded with like you know all of these distractions. Not to mention cell phone and radio towers yeah. and you know obviously TVs in every house. And you know I love my internet. I love my gaming consoles and all of my technological stuff. But you know Wi-Fi bands and Bluetooth and all of these frequencies that are swimming through the air. That like I'm not saying that because they have negative effects on our mind or body, you know that they're inherently evil. But maybe they maybe they just kind of. Uh, misalign the natural state so it's like we yeah sh- we should we should implement the practice of realigning that natural state yeah a balance strike a balance right yeah no right. I, I believe that i think i think all of those like frequencies we're like bathing in harmful frequencies all the time yeah constantly literally constantly so yeah i think like i think that's yeah you know i think that's one of the reasons grounding is so important I think also what I was trying to get at is that, again, it's like, I think in modern times, most people are probably so not grounded because we're constantly swimming in these frequencies and this anxiety and this fear that's being like pumped at us. But it's like, maybe, you know, maybe like what we were talking about in ancient times, people potentially could have been a little bit more, uh, maybe I should say less anxious. Yeah. If you think about it. Well, not to mention that people are not going outside as much anymore either right so your contact with the sun your mood your circadian rhythm all of that disconnected by the roof over your head yeah so moral of the story to me is go outside touch grass yeah did you know um that like observing nature like if you just go outside and you observe nature waves beautiful mountain scenery grass flowers whatever waterfall it actually aligns your brain with the alpha wave state where were we talking about nature? Full disclosure. Okay, thank you. Yeah, last week I think we were having a similar discussion. But dude, I mean there was a there was a time where I would have thought that stuff like the whole like touch grass thing and like the go outside and see the nature. There was a time I would be like cringe, whack, whatever. It could not be more true. Like like now when I have a moment that I can just spend in nature and nothing else, like just be surrounded in nature. I like feel better than I feel in the rest of my life. Like that, yeah. that is when I feel, I, I feel like I'm being coddled by the earth and it feels even my eyes, it feels soothing to the eyes to, to see things that are, are natural and follow, you know, because there, there's like such intentional. There's a rhythm to it. There is dude. There is. And the, what's the, the golden ratio thing that's mm-hmm. like, it's 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 baked into the dna of us and nature we are nature we need to be out there in nature Mm -hmm. it sounds so hippy dippy but like it really is true man if i am isolated for a long time and like away from nature and not prioritizing grounding and just putting all putting the phone away and the screens away and being in nature it really throws me off right like big time and again it's like i love my technology i love you know things that we have access to in modern times i just think that like maybe the balance there is we understand the implications of connecting with nature grounding dude if you you might be the kind of person where i don't want to go sit in grass for three hours i don't want to go you know out in the mountains that's fine because now i believe that a mystic is similar to a scientist and like my philosophy is Okay, so you know this knowledge exists, right? What's the easiest way to exploit it? Just like Occam's razor, scientist, right? I think a mystic is no different. I know that there's this spiritual existence. What is the easiest, most shortcut route to get the desired effect or result because of the existence of this premise, okay? You don't want to go sit in nature? That's fine. You can listen to 7.83 hertz frequency and your brain will subconsciously uh, in train to this sound, boom, you're grounding. You could be sitting at your computer. I do this a lot. Um, you're having a bad day, whatever. You don't have time to go sit in nature. Pop them headphones in. Be listening to the Schumann resonance. You can be grounding while you're being productive or, yeah. you know, studying or doing homework or doing office work or sometimes I'll do it, you know, back before the house thing and I had a lot more time to play video games. 
Um, sometimes I'd just be sitting there playing video games while listening to yeah. Theta Waves. Yeah. For, I swear to God. You could get that grounding blanket and put your feet on it. I want to get one. That could, yeah. That's your desk. I do want to get one. You know. That would yeah, be that cool. Too. Also, uh, I could be speaking false here, but I'm pretty sure there's shoe companies that are removing the rubber from the soles mm-hmm. so that your feet actually get to touch the ground. There's grounding shoes. Grounding shoes, yeah. That's cool. Yeah, they're probably really expensive, though, but they exist. Yeah. Well, that's cool. Or just go barefoot. There you go. I saw a TikTok recently, probably a couple months ago, and it was this, like, bro science, you know, basically, like, this grounding shit is whack. It's fake. It's a pseudoscience. And it's like, actually, if you just open your eyes and do, like, the slightest amount of research and you know in your head, like, where to look you can find that like it's actually undeniably true you know at, yeah yeah but, like uh personal here but at the beginning of summer my feet calluses are not there so going mm. outside walking on like uh con- or asphalt hurts yeah walking yeah. on rocks hurts and then like it's fun to watch as the summer progresses where it doesn't hurt and then it gets better like more natural more natural and then you know i'm at the peak now where i feel fine going outside barefoot and then you know winter's coming and it's starting all over but it's just a fun thing in my head because i go outside barefoot often now that i have the house i try to go out barefoot as often as possible yeah walk through the mulch the grass whatever i don't care like i'm just like it's worth it and um yeah i just i love walking through grass man always have so that's it. Do you have it. a favorite type of grass? <laughs> Honestly, dude, I, I really... I do. I just don't know what it's called. I like my grass. It's different than the grass I grew up with. Dude, grass is different when you own it. It's true. <laughs> no, it's... It, I, I ain't lying. It's true. <laughs> it's true. It's definitely true. But that that's all I got for the earth, so I'm going to move on to the sun. Um... So we already covered like uh, the circadian rhythm. You have the pineal gland. Um, so your melatonin and serotonin and the hormones that are supposed to like keep you energized and alert during the day and then tired and asleep at night. If you think about it, it's like back, back you know, a thousand years ago in Minecraft times. Right. We didn't have right. TVs and electricity and, you know, we had torches for light, uh-huh. you know. Creepers. You know what else? <laughs> Ender. Um, <laughs> you know what else? It messes with your circadian rhythm. What? Fluoride. Uh oh, here we true. go. True. And and it messes with your melatonin too. Yes. That's really true. does it? Mm-hmm. Melatonin production? Yes. All of it. Wow. Sleep wake cycles. Wait a minute. So like I shouldn't be brushing my teeth before I go to bed? I should be brushing them in so, the morning. So yeah, well, I don't want to piss any dentist off. <laughs> brush um, in the morning. I can tell you that I don't brush with fluoride, but if you're not swallowing it, then who swallows toothpaste? Well, here's Find the them. thing: you brush <laughs> Find your, them. you brush your teeth. Then what do you do? Spit it. No, I mean, do you do you then at some point soon drink a glass of water or eat breakfast? And the the food and water that runs over your teeth and gets chewed up by your teeth eventually gets digested. Mm-hmm. You know, and is the water that you're drinking in the morning does it also have fluoride in it? Because it's the only thing put in our water that treats us and not the water and no one voted for it, but mm-hmm. it's there. Sorry. I did my senior project on fluoride. <laughs> oh, you did? No, it's true. Though. That's cool. It's true. And it has a lot of other effects. It, 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 it affects your, um, like puberty. It affects your hormones, uh, to where you were seeing young people go through puberty sooner because Whoa. of the because of dramatic the of increase of melatonin. Yes. It's Whoa. because of melatonin because of the fluoride. Yeah, yeah, calcification of your pineal gland. The Nazis um, experimented in the concentration camps and would fluoride, put fluoride in the water of the populations really? and launched it. Yeah, and make them like just docile. And, yeah. Whoa. This is like, it's a real pretty dark rabbit hole. So, but, you know, we're kind of on that conversation because it's a, it's a multifaceted. Hey, I, I'm going to be very careful with my words. It is the perfect storm to create uh, an individual that is not in touch with nature, is not in touch with themselves, Free fe- thought. feels out of whack emotionally and physically. And then how does that person become a super independent, you know, free thinking, free thinking individual? 
Mm. You know, so that I think that's about as careful as I can put it. No, that was eloquent, <laughs> eloquently put, dude. Hey, thank you. I, uh, y- y- you got me stunned and tripping, man. <laughs> you got me tripping. So shut dude. up about the sun. <laughs> All right. Shut up about the sun. So basically, okay. So in the previous studies, we we're hearing that there were some groups that were like, I wonder if there's a connection between geomagnetic storms and the Schumann resonance. But there have been studies where they specifically tried to, I mean, I'm sorry, solar storms oh, okay. and the Schumann resonance, because okay. geomagnetic is the earth. But there there have been studies where they specifically observed this, hmm. you know? So um, this is an article from MSN, msn.com which it's like depends on your people could say oh well that's not a scientific article that's fine but i think when i think when mainstream news sources are you know saying or outing something that there has to where there's smoke there's fire there has to be yeah. you know potentially something to it or behind it they're so, a widely credible platform yeah so take take what you will with a grain of salt. But this is from MSN. Perhaps less well-known are the impacts such solar events have on human health, but periods of intense solar activity can disrupt the body's circadian rhythm, nervous system, heart rate, and blood pressure, even if they are not visible to the human eye in the form of an aurora, the researchers say. If solar activity is intense, geomagnetic activity is intense too makes sense so the sun is affecting us obviously and the earth yeah so the earth is kind of like you know on our level as it concerns to you know being affected by the sun we're like on the same team it's a being ah the sun's too bright um (laughs) a researcher at the harvard school of public health carolina uh zili vieria said that if solar activity is intense, geomagnetic activity is intense too, Um, including the links between solar activity and human health and intense geomagnetic activity. We observed an increase of heart rate variability, reduction of cognitive function, increase of blood pressure and adverse health outcomes for pregnant women. This is in part because visible light from solar flares can disrupt the circadian rhythm, which makes sense. You know, if there's a disruption to the usually constant light being emitted from the sun, that would make sense. It would wreak havoc on our brains in some subtle way. But even when the solar activity is not visible to the naked eye, the body can still be affected by these changes in the electromagnetic radiation spectrum. They find that the solar flares disrupting the circadian rhythm can in turn affect sometimes heart function and the body's ability to regulate glucose, which affects diabetics. Oh, wow. Typically, people who have chronic diseases are more uh, sensitive to circadian rhythm disruptions, such as elderly people or people with diabetes, and they are affected more adversely than healthy, uh, just normal health wise people an emerging body of research has linked short-term increases in geomagnetic disturbances to a range of adverse health effects such as cardiovascular diseases neurological diseases behavioral diseases and increased total mortality according to one 2022 study led by the same researcher zilli vieria whoa that's a recent study yep and published in science of the total environment mortality Mm mm-hmm Periods, which uh, total total mortality means like just being, I think it means like um, generally more prone to death from yeah various causes yeah, or yeah. adversities. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm not sure. I'm definitely not 100 percent sure, but. Um, periods of intense solar activity and geomagnetic disturbances have also been found to impair lung function in elderly men and are linked to higher risk of an atrial fibrillation event, potentially because they amplify the harmful effects of pollutants in the atmosphere, according to a 2022 study of the same journal and a 2021 study in EP Europace, respectively. High energy solar events also appear to be linked to social unrest, which makes sense when you think about it. 
possibly because disruptions to the circadian rhythm can trigger increased anxiety and prompt people to act more impulsively. Can you think about that, dude? Like when there's like intense solar flashes, so many people are having disruptions to like their mood, their hormones, their sleep, that it actually like ripples outwards into the collective society being affected. The the social norm or the, the, the norm of like social behavior is affected. Yeah. Planet wide too, because like morphogenetic resonance is a thing. Like right, like we're like a web of nodes. Like uh-huh. it, it's weird to think about it that way, but like your your mental state and your behavior affects your neighbors a thousand percent. Absolutely. And like these solar flares are just like freaking us out. Like that's wild. So again, for anybody who's not convinced, it stands to reason. If it is true. Which I, you know, I believe it is. I could, I could understand. I could empathize with someone who's not quite yet ready to understand this, this wonderful truth that our consciousness does indeed affect the consciousness of others. Get sun pilled. Get sun pilled, <laughs> dude. And earth pilled. And, and you know what? <laughs> Venus pilled. Get, ve- get you know? Venus pilled. Why not, bro? Yeah. <laughs> but get if our pilled. consciousness does affect others, right? If you know, this whole as above, so below philosophy is true. And we all are on a spectrum of fractal consciousness. Then it would, you know, stand to reason that, okay, if, if I'm affecting the collective here on earth, then earth, or even, you know, an individual within that collective is affecting me consciousness. Yes. On the grand scale, but Mm -hmm. also other planets, other celestial bodies. Yeah. And then it also stands to reason that they would be affecting us. Absolutely. How I, I wonder. I'm in. I believe it a thousand percent. It's just to scale it up. Look at how, like, if we, if our consciousness affects one another, where we, you know, in proximity or whatever, scale it way up. Like, you know, if you look at the planets, like, yes, obviously they're super far apart, but if you look at the scale and like the size of these planets, like, they're not as far apart as they may seem in comparison to their size, you know? Right. Like, I, I'm a hundred percent in on that they all affect one another it just it just makes sense to me man there's 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 no question in my mind and then the last thing is i wanted to talk about the moon because it is like an age old superstition that the moon i've heard cops say it before my friends who are police officers i've just heard this my whole life there's more crime mm-hmm. there's more there's more activity i've on always full moon. heard it yeah. yeah it's a very common thing paramedic yeah. friend of mine what they say? Same thing. What they there's, say? There's, there's more higher like, activity of yeah. the calls of emergencies. I have a, a coworker who's a firefighter, and he says the same thing. Yeah, he's like, you yeah, know, it's it's a hundred percent. I mean, it, it governs you know the female cycle and how they feel mm-hmm. uh, throughout a twenty eight day cycle. I mean, men are tied to the sun, mm-hmm. right? Your energy levels. Um, I don't think it's far off. I don't think it's off base at all. And it's where lunatic comes from, Mm. which is what he was bringing up earlier. The word Mm -hmm. Luna, which is obviously moon, and then tick means something like of a sort or... It's um, like fanatic. Like it's the same suffix. Yeah. So back in ancient days, they would say a lunatic is like somebody who is crazy or has some sort of like mental possession or illness believed to have been affected by the moon. Yeah. And then they also called this Transylvania syndrome. What? People that are ver- uh, uh, ver- werewolves. <laughs> vampires. Okay, now that was not intentional. <laughs> werewolves or vampires. Yeah. Um, Transylvania syndrome. You know, lunatics. They made a whole bunch of books about... They did. This is called Twilight. Oh. <laughs> so it's just, it's crazy when you think about it. Like, how common this was in the psyche of mankind and all we really are connected with is like our modern culture of like you know we've had movies for like a hundred years we really it's hard to comprehend the the connection to these ancient spiritual practices in modern times like it's yeah. it's in the vernacular mm-hmm. some a word that we've probably all said differently apart from each other hundreds if not thousands of times mm-hmm. and even knowing like the meaning behind it yeah i didn't tip. i didn't even know until a few years ago th- when i had to look it up that our moon is named luna i didn't know that i was just like wait a minute why do all these other moons get names and ours is just called moon 
<laughs> then I googled it. Luna. Oh, I didn't know that either. Actually, it has they a name. Don't fucking, they don't tell us that. Hmm. Why don't they tell us that? It actually has a name. Luna. Wow. Like every, you know, you just named hella moons from all these other planets. And I, was I like, thought ours was moon. That's why I'm saying. I was like, what the hell? Why don't we get a cool ass name? What was it? Phobos and Deimos. Deimos. Yeah. That goes way harder. It goes way hard. But Luna. That's our girl. That's cute. Yeah. I dude, I just found that out, like in my adult ass life. Yeah. Lunes is uh Spanish for Monday. Lunes. Like Luna. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's another Lunday. thing. All the like weekdays are named after like mm -hmm. like planets and or gods that were named after planets. You know, it's all connected. So I found this funny. Um it's a Shakespeare quote from Othello. It is the very mm. error of the moon. She comes more near the earth than she was wont. And makes men mad. <laughs> I saw the same the same quote. Dude, we got a quote from hundreds of years ago. This famous poet slash author who just, you know, very nonchalantly. The point is like, this is a concept that has been observed way before our cop and paramedic buddies. Oh, way before. They were talking about the moon, like affecting mood in Egyptian times. Yep. Like, it's been happening for thousands of years. So, Pliny the Elder. Love it. Suggested. You've talked about him before on the show. I've yes. heard that name before. Many times. Yeah. Pliny the Elder suggested that the brain is the moistest organ in the body. Okay. And therefore That's susceptible common. to the pernicious <laughs> influences of the moon, which trigger the tides. So, the ancient yeah. belief... The moist get you, bro. Yeah, no, yeah, it got him. What? What? <laughs> He's like, don't draw attention. You to need it. to dry up, man. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what I'm getting from that is because there's more water. The theory, the the theory is that because there's more water content, it's affected mm -hmm. more by the, the, like the resonant tide. frequencies, like the tide. Yes, <laughs> yeah, yes. the tides of the brain. Yeah, the tides of the brain. <laughs> yes, exactly. Are but also good? like the cymatic thing, you know, the resonant frequencies. Yeah, in the water. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that was the theory. Yeah. What ails you? <laughs> He's still recovering. What ails you, boy? What ails you, boy? When I was growing up, my dad would always be like, what ails you? Really? Yeah. Your dad would say that? Uh-huh. What ails you, boy? Like it was not... Like, like it, what's wrong with you? What ails I'm you? I'm going to take that, that home with me. Yeah, that's, that's cool. That's epic. Well, his grandma always said it, I think. Oh, cool. What ails you, boy? I just thought it was a thing from like Lord of the Rings. <laughs> you know what my boss from New Jersey doesn't understand? What? Why people from the South say ill. Like he was ill. Ill. Oh, he was, he was Ill. ill. Yeah, he Ill. was ill with him. Because right. he, because where he's from, they're like, "Yo, that shit was ill." Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> In New Jersey. New Jersey, dude. Yeah, they all say that. It, it sounds like that. Ill. You should. You <laughs> yeah, should. I'm sorry I brought it up. You should. You want to really blow his mind? You say oil. You want to know something crazy, bro? Oh. Yeah. You know, you know. Don't be talking crazy. oil at me. Oh. I, I'm, I'm about to. You make me ill, bro. Damn. You know what? He's from North Carolina. He has never heard of Fatback. Him? Yes. You don't know what Fatback I've is? Heard, I just ignored Yo, you. Yo, hold up, hold I, up, hold I up. I ignored up. him when he was talking about it. We're not I, the same. We're not. He grew up at the beach. Exactly. Brother. We, brother. we grew up in the sticks, <laughs> boy. <laughs> hey, this is slander. <laughs> no, we this grew up slander. in the sticks. I asked you the other day. I was You're like, a little beach bum. <laughs> dude. Whatever, dude. dude. Pansy. <laughs> well, I, I'm not saying all that. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> I just cannot believe he ain't never heard of fat bag. Dude. That's crazy. Bro, I have heard of fat bag. I just don't. Well, I have he said not you didn't eat it at the same frequency that you eat it. Have you had fat bag? Yes. Nah, he lied. What's it like? He, he lied. <laughs> he's lying. He's lying. He's lying. You ain't that never ate smart. chitlins. You ain't never ate gizzard. I haven't. I haven't. You ain't never ate. Well, I ain't never ate gizzard. Pork crackling. You ain't never ate gizzard. Oh, I love Wait, pork crackling. Pork, pork rinds? No, sir. Pork crackling is you what I have said. To, you don't have to raise your voice at me. I, I, I did make the <laughs> mic clip a little bit. I'm sorry. It is it is crackling, different here, man. Crackling is different. Than, you keep saying it. I, I don't make me know what it is. Don't make me know what it is. It, it's different. You're going to mock me. You're a beach boy, and we're country it's different, boys. Man. Me and Ryan are country boys. It's, it's definitely different, bro. Like the 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 southernness is different between Fayetteville and Wilmington. Yeah, dude. Wilmington Absolutely. is like – Wilmington's like – LA compared to like Grace oh Creek. Compared to Grace compared, Creek. Compared, oh my God. Compared to Grace Creek. I'm gonna, I got to log off after that. I could, <laughs> I'm not going mean, to sit here you're idly. Basically, you're basically a California. I'm not going to stand here idly and get called that. <laughs> I mean, he, he, it, it is compared you know, to Grace Creek. It, it is a little different, but I mean, it's like, 
it's like uh you know people here and i love it it's my style dress like the you know the beach collared shirts and like the shorts like yeah. you know and then in fayetteville it's like you know camo all <laughs> camo all hey. day yeah yeah buddy it's uh and fitted you know and, and, and back to the moon because <laughs> we we got here somehow from I, I i can't remember how i got on fatback if i'm being honest it's the tide is just yeah the, oh because he was but, moist <laughs> he was moist he was dripping wet with laughter dude he was. he was dripping wet with laughter and it just made me think about him being so freaking moist uh, you're dripping wet with laughter he was I've never heard that in my entire life, but that accurately describes what was happening to Alex. A minute ago. <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't contain it. Hey, you, you know what though? Wet with we, we can talk all the shit we want, man. But you know, my daddy didn't own a fried chicken joint in the hood. Ah, that's pretty sick. <laughs> you know, it's pretty badass. So it's, yeah, it's pretty dope. It is what it is. It is what it is. But, uh, yeah, so there's actually no real scientific connection to the moon and crime. And like raised activity. It's only a philosophical connection. It's only a philosophical connection. Like there, yeah. It's real though. I mean, it's got to be. It is. It is a thousand percent real, dude. I'm telling you. So I've the, heard it my whole life. The, it's got to be real. I think so too. But the Department of Justice has actually done studies and they found like they don't believe there to be a connection. But you have to think. Because the government's never lied. Right. <laughs> right, right. Bro, I was just telling Alex earlier before you got here. I shouldn't be saying this in a public <laughs> forum. Bro, okay. I got I got a letter in the mail today that I owe, let's just say I owe my taxes. Yeah. Right? I got on the phone with the lady and I said this is in, in 40 minutes of a hold time for um for the freaking IRS and I was like, "Look, this is impossible." I got a proof for a loan. I uh, worked with mortgage lenders, you know, and had to work with an accountant to get my taxes paid. I even had people commit fraud against my name, and I had to physically go into the IRS to uh, to to get that resolved so I could pay my taxes and get a proof for a loan. There is no way that I owe this outstanding bill on my taxes. And she's like, let me go take a look. It's going to take me five minutes. She gets back 30 seconds later. She's like... Yeah, because your wife's name is the primary, but you filed in your name, the money you paid in taxes has been sitting in an account on the IRS's database for like four months. So we're going to move that over into her name and submit that. Bro, so as as far as they knew, I was I never paid my taxes. And they, they had accrued lots of interest. And so I'm just saying, you know, that is so infuriating. Talk about, you know, the government being efficient. So they ran a study, <sighs> if this, you know, means anything, against like four uh, police departments. Yeah. For like four years. And they found that there is a correlation to crime with a full moon. And it is, there are more break-ins on a full moon. But they believe that perhaps it's because there's more light Idiots. so that they can see. Idiots. <laughs> Idiots. <laughs> Dude, bullshit. That's... So they can see the locks better and pick the locks. Right. That's such a fucking cop out, dude. So the study says, police activity in the full moon. This is on the Department of Justice's website. Two hypotheses were that a relationship exists between the full moon and the amount of police activity, calls for police service, and there is greater police activity during the full moon. These are the hypotheses, right? Police activity types and amounts of calls for police services was studied in three medium-sized law enforcement agencies. The research consisted of a month-by-month -month analysis of police activity at each agency. A total of 59 months and 972 police shifts were analyzed. So I guess um, 59 months. That's, that's right at five years, actually. That's one month shy of five years. Mm. Okay. Police calls were studied by classification, domestic assault, disorderly conduct, drunkenness, robbery, breaking and entering, larceny, and shoplifting. Are all of those heightened because of the light? The police activity involving police calls was not significantly greater during either full moon phase or the non-full moon phase. Results thus did not support the first hypothesis. It was found, however, that there is more police activity involving breaking and entering during a full moon, <laughs> suggesting that the moonlight gives an offender the light necessary 
to break and That's enter. That's so dumb. Although bright light may be a deterrent to crime, dim light, such as moonlight, may increase the likelihood for crime. Further research is necessary to explore this possibility. Okay. And then there was one other story I read where they said the incidences of crimes reported to three police stations in different towns, one rural, one urban, and one industrial, was studied to see if it varied with the day of the lunar cycle. The period of the study covered 1978 to 1972. The incidence of crimes committed on full moon days was much higher than on all other days, new moon days, and seventh days after the full moon and new moon. A small peak in the incidence of crimes was observed on new moon days, but this was not significant compared with crimes committed on other days. The incidence of crimes on equinox and solstice days did not differ significantly from those on other days, suggesting that the sun probably does not influence the incidence of crime. The increased incidence of crimes on full moon days may be due to human tidal waves caused by the gravitational of the moon okay um so they're actually saying there is a spike in crime i don't know how that i guess i read the one study and then forgot the results of that one so all over the place like what what's the consensus here government yeah what is it do i owe in taxes or not tell me what to think (laughs) do i owe in taxes or not (laughs) no we got it squared away they literally had oh, oh it's just been sitting in an account in the internet Ugh, well, I think they did exactly what they set out to do and made it more gray than it was in yes, the beginning. Yes, they wanted to make it more difficult, so you and they spent more a bunch of money. Jump through. Are oh, we talking about the moon or the taxes? <laughs> the taxes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, the yeah. moon and the taxes. But dude, like, okay, so this study was saying there is a peak on. I, I'm telling you, I, I, I do not know how. I read the part that it said there was no relation to the sun and then they read the next study that said there was none and I think I glossed over that part but they are at, there is actually breaking news <laughs> woo, woo, there woo. is data to suggest that <laughs> there is an effect on the human psyche by the full moon and that there is a peak in crime damn dude do you owe taxes or not so that's a wrap that's a wrap on the moon we have legitimate measurable effects on the human physiology and psyche by the Three celestial bodies, the Earth, the Sun, and the Moon. Stamp it. Confirmed. I mean, it's the smoking gun, dude. Confirmed. It's the smoking moon. That's, that's. I mean, I can't, I can't argue with that. I can't live up to that. I can't deny that. And yeah. I'm beholden. I just pictured like a, the moon, like smoking. The smoking moon. Bro, the smoking moon. <laughs> I, I'm I'm at a loss of words. Yeah, like I'm the, honestly at a loss of words. I've looked at studies before, like just just of the numbers of like crime, and it like it is pretty crazy how consistently it spikes during a full moon. Maybe the cops are right, bro. Maybe they, the paramedics they, and the EMS guys and the firefighters are right. Yeah, they even. Wait, are we still on this? I thought we settled this. Dude, I'm, you're moist over there. Maybe you're, Shakespeare you're, was right. Yeah. <laughs> About, oh yeah <laughs> about the moon making me mad it does maybe, maybe you know <laughs> I, I i'm just honestly i'm i'm at a loss of words i'm i'm out of notes and that is the end of my studies there so that's we're a, that's amazing we're kind of navigating open waters here yeah well, open water open moisture any thoughts yeah um yeah, I'm like I said before. I, I to me, it's like it's a truth that I've accepted that like the celestial bodies affect us. Uh, I mean, if the Earth does and the celestial bodies affect one another, why wouldn't it affect us? Why wouldn't they affect us? That's how I've always rationalized astrology in my mind. Right. Me too. Is like the point of emergence into this world like where the planets were like their the amount of vibrations that you're picking up on when you emerge into the world like where those planets are you know obviously it influences how much of their vibration you're getting in that moment and it's like this cocktail of you know and obviously i think it, it stands to like it's logical to believe that 
the entire time that you're like incubating and growing in your mother's womb, it's all affecting you, all of that. Right. But uh, it's still the cycles. It's still the cycles of the, the alignment of the planets. It's all different. And then when you finally emerge, it's like that's the map to how those planets may have been affecting you when you got here. I believe that. It's crazy to think too that like we literally gestate for nine months in in the womb, which like you're just floating in a little water tank. Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. and and it's the same with like uh, the the Earth. You know, it's like the Earth is the Divine Mother. It's mostly water. It's it's like the womb. But then also the Egyptians talked about like space being this giant womb, and it was depicted. It is kind of okay. as water. Well, that like. You know, you can look at our solar system as kind of like a womb or even beyond our specific solar system. Like we are so much more connected to the cosmos than most people realize. Right. Like, oh, I have this I have this quote I want to read, actually. Let me read this real quick. This is my boy, Neil deGrasse. Love him. Hey, shout out. The <laughs> 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 yeah, you said that's so <laughs> So casual, like you knew he was listening. <laughs> oh, I know. Hey, shut up. <laughs> he is listening. Okay. Neil deGrasse. Nah, I'm just kidding. This one's for you. He said, the atoms in your body were manufactured in the cores of stars billions of years ago. Stars that explode. If they didn't, these atoms would be locked away forever. They explode, scattering the that enrichment across the galaxy. And out of that enrichment forms planets, life, and people. When you look up in the night sky, if you feel small and lonely, the knowledge that we are not just figurative, figuratively, we're literally stardust, can bring a sense of belonging in what might otherwise be a cold and dark universe. So to break down like exactly what that means, it's like every little atom that you are comprised of was at one point or another a made, part of a star forged in the heart of a dying star like that sounds so out there and and woo woo and whatever but like the world's leading scientists this is not a this isn't a discussion this isn't a debate we know we have traced where at our atoms come from really life in general we know for a 100 percent fact where it comes from is the cores of these exploding stars that's the only way that life can even begin to exist in the first place. So you want to talk about connection to the cosmos. Like you literally are the same as everything you're looking up in the sky and seeing. You're the same stuff. The same stuff. Everything in the universe is like what? Carbon. It's like three things. It's like hydrogen, carbon, and I don't know. So it's, everything's basically made of carbon. Right. Like everything. Every living thing. Yeah. Everything is made out of the same stuff, and it all came from these big, huge, exploding celestial bodies billions of years ago. That's that's that really is just like that's it, just so mind is that, boggling uh, to comprehend. That's is that not magic? Is that not God? Is that like I I don't know. It's it's really it's it's and then if you think about like through the lens of ancient civilizations writing these like these elaborate mythologies about us coming from these gods who are represented by these actual celestial bodies. And then like you, the science is now proving it that like, yes, they were, they were, those were like, like mythology and fables and stuff like that. But what they were saying is like, we come from those celestial bodies and that's actually true. Mm -hmm. It's unbelievable. It's so unbelievable. It is. That's where the whole concept of like, like the Greeks, that's where they come up with like Mount Olympus is just looking up and like that Mount Olympus is just an allegory for space. That's all it is. Interesting. That's, that's all it is. Is like, they look up, they see the celestial bodies who they associate with, you know, some of the main gods of their mythology. And they're like, they're up above us looking down on this like mountain. They're high above us. That's always been so fascinating to me. Like how they came up with the, you know, the constellations and like, that is so bizarre because they didn't have this before, or maybe they did. Maybe, maybe you know, maybe this was some proto-Atlantean knowledge that existed. I, I don't know. That is a, a theory for sure. But they were looking at these little bodies of stars, and you look at them, and it's like, oh, that one's supposed to be a scorpion. 
That does not look like a scorpion. <laughs> but they're like, you know, it's the scorpion and it's, uh, what is the scorpion? Um, uh, Scorpio. Scorpio. You know, yeah, and, yeah. and, you know, cancer, the crab. And it's like, you know, they do not look like these things, but they had these whole stories about these things and, you know, draw these like diagrams of them and these mythologies. And it's just like, how do they come up with this stuff? They didn't have, they weren't, they weren't disconnected like we are. Right. They weren't. That's what they did. Nobody had done it before. You know, I yeah. ima- imagine living in a world where we don't have the constellations mapped. We have no understanding of how the planets work and why they. We orbit wouldn't have the- clocks. <laughs> we wouldn't have shit. Yeah. I mean, like you know, like it's it's really fascinating to think through the lens of somebody living in those times. Like you would really be. Beholden. It is right. Yes. Breaking news. You know, the the this constellation is a scorpion. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh shit. Breaking news. We're not the center of the universe. Like, yeah. like, you know, they're, they're discovering this shit constantly. You would, you would look outside, you would walk outside and look up and be so beholden to everything above you. It's, it's one thing where we look up and we have some minute understanding of how that stuff works. Well, plus, we have crazy light pollution too. Yeah, like comp- if you live near yes. a city, of course. Yes, you know, compared to back we then, don't, we don't, we even don't even see the same sky. A fraction, yeah, of it. But I mean, to, to we we have like we have a decent foundation of knowledge on how you know the universe works. We right. certainly don't know everything, but like we have a solid foundation of how space works and celestial bodies and orbit and gravity and imagine living in a time where you didn't know any of that like it would feel like you're looking up and just witnessing gods above you right it would feel so tremendous yeah that's that's very true like you you maybe they they would like literally be like these are gods yes i yeah, think that's where that sense. mythology came from and it's like the the most of, they're named after even Chinese culture, Japanese culture, like even the Mesopotamians, the oldest, they're worshiping the stars and the celestial bodies as gods, right, right. as actual gods. And then as time went on, they started doing, you know, creating mythology and allegory and describing them as like, oh, it's, just, it's a mountain instead of space. And like, you know, that those those balls of gas up there are like actually like humanoid gods. Like, they, but well, to add to that, the esoteric, like, you know, based on the the for example the secret teaching of all ages which is connecting it it does this great history of showing how all these traditions like connect and and how they've merged and how to bleed into each other the, the suggestion in the esoteric world is that like the 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 atlanteans already had this knowledge mm-hmm. and then we lost touch with it but it survived in these esoteric circles you know and like in the mainstream we had oh you know the stars are literally gods but like maybe there were people who you know knew the bigger picture and had these the secret wisdom and i think there were you know it's like there was some sort of proto-atlantean knowledge that you know select groups from multiple different cultures around the world knew and used that to flesh out these myth systems to disseminate to the masses yeah so that they would have that primitive version it's just a theory but yeah it's cool to think about yeah. It's fascinating. It's so fascinating. Yeah, it really is, man. And then it's like, uh, we don't even have to go into this, but like the Hindu system has had mm. like a several tens of thousands of year star chart, you know, that they talk about like the, the, the cosmology of the universe. And it's like, I'm just scratching my head at this stuff, man. Yeah. Like it's, <laughs> and, and you know how accurate it's been, but yeah, yeah, yeah I think, I think that's a good place to. Wrap it and slap it. How you doing over there, moist brain? Doing good. I'm good. <laughs> you want to say you should sign us out this time. You should, man. Me? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, y'all ready? I'm ready. I'm ready. Bye guys. Bye guys. Bye guys. guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to see more, check out our other videos. And before you go, don't forget to subscribe. See you next week. Peace. Peace.